other, I think, is really Lunge a TV. Robert Everton and Manja.tv streaming live uh, at Twitch and on Manja.tv. And by all means, let's use some technology if you have it at your disposal. And uh, join the chat. You can chat at hashtag Manja.tv. All right? And I'll answer the questions. I will answer the questions. This is Cooking Vamp 94. We're going to chat Valentine's soundtrack with my friend Perry Cicchini. He is a music aficionado. All right, not only is he teaching English and uh, film uh, in school, but uh, the guy's kept up on the music scene his entire life, and I can't wait to bring him on in just a second here. Now, first of all, a little business. You know, if you're in the market for fine wine, believe me, you cannot do any better than SellerAngels.com. Use Manja Wine and there's a coupon code on checkout, and they're going to take care of shipping one case one bottle to one case on them. All right, you're not going to find wines like these. It's uh, Napa small vintners. Uh, talk about supporting local, even if they're not your local vintner. Who's got a local vintner next to them anyway? Not a lot of places that produce Napa quality wines. But these are all small vintages, and uh, you're not going to find better wine on the planet. So go to CellarAngels.com and buy some wine. All right, and listen, we're not going to judge if you drink your wine out of a juice glass. Mm. My, my friend Big D, you know, this is Cooking Vamp 94. My friend Big D, I thought that he'd be on a vamp sometime in the first year, maybe the first year and a half. You know what? I got a feeling that he's going to show his face here this year, 2017. Big D will be back on a vamp. All right, so let's see if technology is, uh, is working. All right, first of all, we always have to deal with technology. There he is, Robert Perry Cicchini. I hear you fantastic. I got no, I got no video feed on you. Uh, I just have you sitting uh, smoking a, a big old stogie. Well, that's not, that's not a bad deal. No, you look like Al Capone, sort of. <laughs> Al Capone, but I want the imagination to see your beautiful face. I mean, you don't even have a picture up. It's just this, this. I uh, Let's see if, it, if I can do that. Hold on. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> technology. Te hey. Technology. Uh, Home run. How's it going, brother? Oh, dude, I, I'm living the dream here. That's and, all uh, we can do. That's all we can do. I, I, you know, I see that you have hats in the background, and uh, I'm noticing there's not a uh, opening, opening night at Wrigley Field there anymore. <laughs> yeah, it used to be right up there, right in the middle. My yeah. showpiece hat. I guess the only way to, to introduce Perry, other than uh, the fact that, you know, I thought that I knew a lot about music going away to college with an older sister and seven older brothers. So, you know, I thought I was like, I, and then, uh, you know, relatively quickly I met you and realized there was so much more to learn in music. Other than that, he is the man that held a hat safe for 25 <laughs> years, 30 years. Yes, oh, man. Well. At um, least. I don't know. You you know, you left it uh, in my, I think, my parents' house um, not shortly after that game. Because that hat was beautifully shiny and brand new. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 I got to tell you something. You, uh, when, the, when the Cubs were on this drive for the World Series, I wore it like three times and they lost every time I wore it. So it went back up <laughs> on, on my wall, too. I was like, well, I, it all turned out well in the end, right? In the end. I mean, they couldn't have scripted a better ending than that. Okay. And speaking of scripting, all right, this is a beautiful segue right into uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day soundtrack. Now, I've vamped on this before, uh, and I've talked about the importance of, uh, of giving some thought to the music and to the soundtrack. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about music for Valentine's Day, in particular in the kitchen. Because for me... You know, in the kitchen is where a lot of magic can happen. First of all, I've done a, a bunch of amps this year on learning three chord tunes because the party always ends up in the kitchen. I mean, it seems like the kitchen's got the best vibe to it. But particularly, you know, for all these young bucks out there that are uh, maybe going to cook dinner on Valentine's Day for a gal and try to woo her heart. And for sure, if you got shitty cooking skills, <laughs> that you better have a music soundtrack to uh 
So uh, just give me some of your thoughts about cooking, music, Valentine's Day. Well, off the top of your head before we get into your list. Well, you know, I, I think as we talked about before, I'm in, of the Marge Simpson school of cooking where, you know, it's, it's made with love. You can taste it. And uh, so I think the music has a big, you know, effect on that. Um, for me, music is the mood. And uh, if you can infuse your food with that mood, then, you know, you've got it going on. What? So what? choosing the right music is, is right. All, you know, it's what it's all about. I love that. I, I never heard it put quite like that before. You know, that is beautiful. If you, and I, you know, I, I completely agree with that. And, uh, you know, that's been part of the Mongenation battle cry has been that, you know, you, you got to, first of all, you got to bring love to it. Right. And that when you do, Absolutely. it's, it's going to change the way things taste, man. People understand the energy that's brought into any situation, but especially in the cook, in the, in the kitchen, with cooking all right i know we talked a little bit yesterday uh you know not everything in, on maji tv is completely off the cuff uh, i mean just about 90 well you know in cooking competitions when we're doing that it's 100 percent off the cuff um but uh I, I know we left it off and uh, and i agreed with you here uh, on an album having having an album that you can put on. Now, now some of the, the younger kids, unless their parents have got back into it, and I know a lot of people that have got back into having vinyl in the house yeah. and, and having yeah. a setup for specifically for vinyl. But I love the idea of playing a full album, the way uh, music kind of evolved and then has kind of, actually artists are getting back to it because they understand that they, an album is a storytelling vehicle as opposed to a CD that is more, you know, I mean, you can throw it up in the air and, and shoot at it with a skeet. <laughs> you know, I've only ever done that one time in my life, shooting skeet, and it was in, on your farm. <laughs> See? There we go. I missed. All right, all right let's, talk, uh, let's talk albums first, and we're going to get back to the technology side of this conversation. But uh, let's talk albums first. Uh, what, what are you going to as far as an album to put on uh, to, to guarantee mood? Uh for a well, that's the whole thing. You know, it's like, what what kind of mood do you want to create? Is it like purely, you know, is it romantic? With the, and here's, the other, here's the other thing, too, that you have to understand is the gal that you're cooking for or that you're cooking with has to dig the music. Now, you can you could obviously introduce her to, to some new, you know, artist or whatever if, if, she, if she's never heard of, but it's very risky and you better be willing and ready to jump and take it off um, well but it's cost me many a relationship <laughs> i'll bet it has you know you put as on... my lovely wife says i'm a music snob and so i i i have a hard time um compromising you know like i want i'm, I'm more inclined to try and turn them on to something new than to go with what i think they already know right but you know right. All right, so tell me, uh, or give me an album. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what. Right. Uh, there's this Jose Feliciano album, and uh, he it's from 1967. So he, you know, he was already going, but this is all in Spanish. Really. And uh, it's really beautiful. It's really romantic. It's um, if you want to set, you know, set a kind of an exotic romantic mood. It's a great album for it. It's called El Sentimiento La View Guitarra. El Sentimiento, That's Spanish. El, El, El Sentimiento La View Guitarra. Yeah, nicely yeah. done. Nailed it. In 1967. So shortly after that, I think he you know, he uh, caused all kinds of havoc at Tiger Stadium by doing the national anthem in some kind of funky way. Ah, well, you know, people. Which have... you can find on YouTube, just as you can find Manja TV. Yes, you can. You know, people uh, didn't have quite as much of a sense of humor in 67. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, I think we're getting back to that. Uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're, well, the, the cycle is we're called full circle on senses of humor. Nobody has one anymore, except, <laughs> except <laughs> you and I, uh, terrific well. senses of humor. All right, so I love that. I never heard of that one before, and I can see where you're going here with the, the Spanish guitar, very romantic, yeah. you know? And it is. It's more of the, you know, the candlelight romance. Right. Um, I, you know, I have some other choices that are more, uh, I don't know, like upbeat and um, festive.
but that one's you know for the candlelight romance with the you know if you're making some kind of dish that uh, you want to be seductive but a slow seduction this is a great album to go with now that, let me ask you this is there a chance you break out into this into a salsa or a, or, or a marimba or a, something right there in the kitchen uh, how's the footwork it's possible out? it's possible you know we, anything's we, possible this is the record let's see uh, it's kind of glary oh, isn't no, it? there it is right there perfect yeah all right gorgeous actually you know what i can see it on my skype thing but we've lost your uh the, 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 again technology 50 50 running 50 50. your audio is perfect we lost your beautiful <laughs> face on the feed. That's right, gonna, you're going to miss out. I've got a stack of records here. I don't really, but I could have. <laughs> That's all right. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you I do. I, I'm going to show it. I'm going to hold it I'll, I'll tell you if your face comes back on live on the feed. <laughs> all right. All right. So you, we got uh, Jose Feliciano. Who, who else you got? I've got a, a bunch. Uh, the first couple are kind of on the exotic side. Um, Stan Getz. In, I, I never know how to know say his name, but Giao, uh, Gilberto, they did a really super famous album. Um, but later on, they got together again and did a live album called 76, because it was in 1976. Right. And uh, Gilberto sits down, you know, and plays just his acoustic guitar and does his, you know, sweet, soft voice. It, too, is, you know, kind of the, uh, like, really exotic, but it's a little lighter. With uh, Feliciano, you know, it's I think it's more like uh, a heavy romance. With Gilberto, <laughs> it's kind of full of light, you know. I, I get it. Yeah. So you know. And uh, Stan Getz, you know, he's a great saxophone player. They called him the Sound, I think. And uh, he's just, you know, it's, it's really salt. It's, so you have the acoustic guitar and the tenor saxophone doing their thing, dancing their tango, as it were. Right. And uh, right. it's great stuff. What is the name of that? Then, uh, Getz, Gilberto, seventy six. All oh, right on. All right. I, tell tell me, we're gonna, you know, being a Motown boy, you're gonna talk some Motown. I mean, you know, I thought I uh, did. It, did the Motown not make your top ten? Well, not as an album. Okay. But, you know, uh, I have you know my my top song, and this may be odd for some people. Um, because it's not like a super uh, romantic, you know, song, but it's a love song, um, is Marvin Gaye. But it's not Let's Get It On, it's not What's Going On. I'll play it for you a little bit. Uh, <laughs> So it's called Never Let You Go, and it's off an album called, um, what the heck is it called, uh, Soulful, Soulful Moods. One more time. It's from 1961, so it's like really super early Marvin Gaye. Yeah, it's pre-Perry Cicchini, Robert Heffernan. <laughs> yeah, but actually I think I discovered After You, of uh, Soulful Moods. Now, you were talk we were talking yesterday um and you were talking about swinging songs for lovers that the, an album that he did it was, no no that's sinatra oh that's sinatra songs swinging lovers songs. and i love that because frank sinatra he could be talking about you know swinging lovers or he could be talking about like swinging you know like hey let's swing right exactly or swingers like uh you know, exactly <laughs> um all right well give me another okay. album Billie Holiday, Solitude. Really? Beautiful album. It's from the 1950s, which is, you know, getting towards the end of her career because she didn't live long enough. Um, but it's just beautiful, and she's got that voice. And she could pretty much sing anything, and it's romantic. Um, so, All right, I, 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 you know, I'm noticing, looking at I've got, like, three jazz groups in a row. You know, that group, Getz and Gilberto Sinatra and Billie Holiday. But I have other things on here as well. You know um, what, though? I mean, let's face it, that, that, that uh, you know, th those, those genres are way more romantic than, you know, a lot of them. And, you know, and, and as, I, as I found as I was going through looking at music, that, you know, the 40s and the 50s, lots of romantic music. 
Right. Uh, even if you're, you know, like if you're getting to the like doo-wop stuff, there's just a million love songs. Um, this was an impossible task for me. I, <laughs> I'm choosing so, a, a few albums and a few songs. I, it's uh, not my. I, I'm so glad I could uh, cause havoc. At least absolutely. this time I'm not going to call 911 and nearly kill you. Um, but, all right, let's, let, let's, uh, I want to get your take on a few things because uh, um, f- for me, I just wrote down a couple. Uh, um, have you heard the Annie Lennox album? It's, it's an older album called Medusa. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm thinking I liked that one and uh, an older, uh, an older jazz album, again, in the sex genre, John Clemmer. His Touch album. Have you heard of that one? Oh wow, Don Clemmer. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And for my number one song, uh, a bootleg copy of "The Fever" by Bruce Springsteen. Nice and slow. Have you, uh, I mean, it's like you give me fever. I got the fever for the girl. Oh wow, that's crazy. That's uh, great. And uh, let, let's get back and talk a little bit about um, the technology of this. So, so right now we got technology working, and it's unbelievable because uh, you're in Michigan, I'm in Oregon, and we got your audio. Although technology failed, and we've lost your video feed, but you know, <laughs> 50 50 I'm I'm gonna give it okay. And uh, we talked a little bit yesterday about, uh, you know, technology and everybody's always A-OK with technology. Uh, and I find that um, a lot of times in the pluses and minuses, people don't explore the intangibles of what's lost with technology and music at your fingertips. And, it, you know, I was just thinking about this before we came on uh, to add to yesterday's conversation. It almost feels like I, I know that I've gotten away from music compared to where I was even 10 years ago. Um, and it almost seems for, for me, and this is a complete cop-out, I'm going to admit this right up front. But it was like when, when, it, when you took the time to go to an album store and buy albums and search for them and... and you built a collection. It was not just a collection of, of songs. It was a collection of your effort. And now with everything at your fingertip and you just call out to a computer to play some song that you might have heard of in conversation, I don't know. What's your thought on on the fact that, yeah, technology makes music a lot more available for a lot more people, but personally, your interaction with the music, how has it changed with technology? Well, everything you've said is absolutely Correct. I, you know, it's funny because when we were talking earlier and we were talking about, you know, you're cooking a dinner and you want to put on an album. Well, you know, with today's technology, you could put together a playlist ahead of time with a variety of different songs and artists from whatever, you know, genres and eras. Um, and you hit play and it plays. And that's a beautiful thing. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, I, I remember growing up with records and I... I mean, I studied those things. As you, you kind of had to stick around where the music was in order to flip the record over to hear side two. Right. So you never drifted too far away. And, you know, I had that album in my hand. And, I, I mean, I, it's crazy. I knew, you know, everybody who was on the record. I knew the order of the songs. I knew, you know, what company the, the artist was signed with. You know, and I knew what the label looked like on the record. You know, all that stuff. And that's a much more intimate experience um, with the... Uh, with, like you said, the process, you know, of going to choose it and then interacting with it. Especially since, um, the, the, since the, the, the science will tell you that when you, when you play, you know, any new art form that you uh, are exposed to, not everything is just, I love it immediately. So you get an album, you play it once, you're like, ah, I don't know, you, you read it, you interact with it, it becomes... Uh, kind of a how about this too you know it becomes kind of a journey because you've dropped 15 bucks on this album god god damn it i'm gonna end up liking this thing if i gotta play it 50 times <laughs> i don't know just... <laughs> yeah it was i you know i could tell you there were like a couple of times where i re, i returned albums you know and they were you know with both times they're like well you can't really return a record you know and i was but i couldn't get past that you know like i couldn't listen to it enough to finally <laughs> say all right like, I love, love, you know, as you know, I love Lou Reed. 
but he's got this album Metal Machine Music, which is just uh, I you know I, I don't know if it's power tools or <laughs> just a whole bunch of instruments turned up to full blast up to eleven, um, you know, and just left to 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 grind. But it's four sides, you know, two albums, four sides of just garbage noise, you know. Yeah. Some people yeah. think it's like this great work of art. Um, for me, I couldn't handle it, so I I, I bought it at um, what was that record store at Western? The the oh hell. Whistle stop, something crazy, but I bought it there and uh, I returned it. I, I actually taped taped the uh, cover closed, so it looked like it was still in its sleeve. <laughs> I'm sure there's a warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> hey, well, uh, that was that one. T the one illegal T thing I did. Tino Rossi, Tino. come on, you got to tell us about Tino Rossi. Tino Rossi. Um, well, I grew up listening to him because my mother. And it, he was. Uh, one of my mother's very favorite artists growing up in France, you know, she grew up in uh, in France and for a good portion of the time it was occupied France during World War II um, because she left when she was 19, so her kind of formative years. And Tino Rossi was, uh, you know, a, a famous singer who then got involved in films and he was just a, a you know, a French superstar in France. And uh, he just does this great romantic um, music. It's, um, let's see if I can. Can you hear that? Too loud, just down a little bit. I mean, I don't even know what he's singing about. <laughs> but that's romantic. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, and you don't even need to know what you're, what no. you're singing about. My, my friend Dean, you know my friend Dean, he spent a, a year in Italy, and uh, he wrote the Manja TV theme song for us. But the year, Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, the year he came back from Italy, um, he's like, dude, check out this song that I wrote, right? And so he plays this song, and he sings it in, in Italian, and... Uh, I mean, I was like blown away. I'm like, dude, that is just insanely gorgeous. I go, what do the words mean? He goes, complete gibberish. I have no, I mean, <laughs> they're just random Italian sayings just put together. And I'm like, ah, oh, fantastic. Good thing there's no, you know, speaking Italians here or they'd be calling you out. He actually <laughs> sang it at a Hef Fest up on stage. It was just beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Everybody loved Someday it. Someday I'm going to make one of those Hef Fests. You got to do it this year. I got to tell you off air because of uh, who's who's the music. Uh, the music stepped up quite a bit this year. Um, you need to make it this year. I would love to. First Saturday of uh, of August. Put it on the calendar right now. All right, the last. That's one. always been the problem. You know, Fetch calls me all the time and says, "Are you going to come with me?" You know, and I always try to say yes. But that's the week my brother comes to town, and I only get so to see him twice a year. You bring, know? It, bring him to Half Fest. When that I, would be when, a beautiful when, thing. When I show you the musical lineup, <laughs> he's going to want to come. <laughs> now, here, my last one for you. Is, all right. Is, uh, all right, so you've cooked dinner, right? Everything's, everything's gone smooth. The soundtrack was great. Now let's say things are progressing, you know, nicely. Brain.fm. All right, write that down. Brain.fm. They have a focus. Brain.fm. They have a focus track that uh, you apply this uh, in a maybe a massage atmosphere. It's a very. <laughs> it's it's supposed to help you focus on things, but I think there might be a tantric element here that might uh, take Brain.fm, you know, to the top of the charts with uh, their focus tracks. Anyway, that's it. Kind of what I thought. Listen, Perry, thank you so much for hanging out for a little while with us on Maja TV. So a little David Bowie, Wild as the Wind, off station to station. That's my focus. All right, Perry, you uh, take care of yourself. I will see you when I see you, and uh, uh, hopefully it's uh, before Half Fest, but if not, you got to make it to the farm. Absolutely. All right, pal. Have a great one. Thanks. Right on. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Right on. Thank you. See you.
How about my guy Perry Cicchini? Oh my God, is he the best? And uh, how about some of those picks, man? I have two of them I had never heard of before. Um, so I can't wait to check out that music. And with today's technology, you get to just go to YouTube or uh, go to the App Store, go download music. It's uh, ridiculously easy. All right, what else do we got here to cover quickly? Quickly. Um, just, uh, you know, last week we did the Dirty Dozen. And then, uh, you know, because we want to cover all bases here. The Dirty Dozen were the 12 most pesticide-ridden foods uh, that you're going to encounter. So you really want to push yourself towards an organic choice in those things. And these are the Clean 15, though not pesticide-free, the lowest amount of pesticides showing up in uh, just regular farmed things. So uh, onions, corn, I still want to go with the, uh, with the organic on the corn. Pineapples, avocados, asparagus, sweet peas, mangoes, eggplant, cantaloupe. Kiwi cabbage, not kiwi cabbage, kiwi and cabbage, watermelon, sweet potatoes. How about the, the regular potatoes were on the most pesticides, right? Sweet potatoes on the least pesticides. Can't they get the potatoes together and uh, figure this thing out? I don't know. Grapefruit and mushrooms. All right, don't forget your mushrooms. Fantastic superfood. Mushrooms and everything. And uh, so th there's the clean 15 for your viewing pleasure. I didn't get a chance to update the Manja 300 food challenge. Um, I think I got a couple more in and well, I wanted to point this out because uh, Ron at Clean Drop Mobile uh, pointed out there's 400 or 450 different kinds of cheeses by themselves. Cheese. All right. You can you can hit the Manja 300 food goal just by cheese. 250 of them are from Italy, I believe. That's what the tweet uh, the tweet thing said. So by all means, get more cheese in your diet, uh, varietally. All right, varieties of cheese. You know, ferment it too. Let's let's not forget fermentation nation. Um, so you got that going. All right. That's what I got this week. Listen, do yourself a favor and cook somebody a meal, all right? And if you're going to cook a Valentine's meal, take my friend Perry's suggestion and get some, uh, get some killer backing going for when you're in the kitchen, you know, and uh, good things will happen if you give a little bit of uh, thought process, a little bit of thought process to the soundtrack, all right? So thank you, Perry, for showing up. And uh, helping out tonight. You guys have a great week. We will see you next week on Cooking Vamp 95. That's it. Roll credits. Come into my kitchen, babe. I'm gonna fix you something to eat. To eat. I'm gonna mix it up with passion. Gonna throw a pinch of something sweet.